Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, do you aspire to be an entrepreneur, to build your own business, to leave a legacy behind? If you want to know how to get started, or if you're already on your journey and want some help on how to tackle the challenges you're facing, this show is for you. Here at Be Your Own Boss, we hear from entrepreneurs about their stories, some very practical tips, and some inspiration. It's time to get started. The first thing Indian government did was they closed the malls for the COVID. Yeah. And that is when my day one business closed from 4 lakhs to zero. So I had yeah. bought in more than 10 tons of grains for processing. So all those grains had to be thrown in the dustbin because it had expired by that time. The second wave of COVID hit in March 21 yeah. and that's when my entire business got again closed down. So all those things put together and uh, then I had taken up a top up loan also of another 8 lakhs too because I was tied up with constraints and that took up my loan to around 48 lakhs. At 48 mm. lakhs my EMI was around 75,000 rupees a month which was very very difficult to pay for at that time and plus salaries that I had to pay. And that's when I decided that, Baba, I have to sell the house. No. Welcome to another episode of Be Your Own Boss. Our guest this week is Harihar Sharma, the founder of Bhavani Shankar Impacts. It's a Mumbai-based consulting firm which helps businesses in the B2B and the B2C sectors across various domains with sales and business development. Now, the thing about Bhavani Shankar Impacts is that they not only help the businesses with strategic business advice, but also uh, help in implementation of those strategies. And uh, Hari Sir, uh, as we call him, uh, it, Hari Sir was born in uh, Bangalore and uh, settled in Nasik when he was two years old. He uh, they moved to Nasik, Maharashtra, and uh, his father was uh, you know used to work at uh, HAL in Nasik, and uh, he's got uh, three siblings, and his mother was a homemaker, and uh, he did his schooling uh, in Nasik uh, at HAL High School, and later did his uh, BCom and then MBA. And uh, that's when he got into the workforce. So let's hear from uh, Hari sir about uh, his journey. Hari sir, thank you so much for taking our time and joining us here on the Be Your Own Boss podcast. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sachinji. Thank you that uh, here's an opportunity to share my story with a platform like yours, which I never thought that was existing till I met you first. So the <laughs> first, just a small correction is that I've done my master's of commerce and MBA in marketing. So I'm a double postgraduate. So that's a oh, small wow. uh, thing, part of it. So I'll just take you from there. So after completing sure. my MCOM and MBA in marketing, my first uh, journey in my life was of a sales career. So I started my uh, career as a trainee territory sales in charge at Hindustan River Limited and moved on to work at Rai Food Chhattisgarh, covering in the entire Chhattisgarh of Madhya Pradesh. And then from there, I won uh, awards for the best, highest sales as far as sachet to shampoo ratio is. That time, in those days, people used to buy shampoos only in bottles, not in sachets. And I used to sell highest amount of sachet volume compared to a bottle volume. So that was the magic that I had done. And I got an award at All India level for the highest volume selling. And that was my first success in my life where I, uh, I topped the national level, even though being a trainee at the uh, lever with the Hindustan levers and then moved on to work. I became a permanent employee called as a territory sales in charge, which they call it. And then I moved on to various companies. I shuffled right from Johnson Johnson, Shell Petroleum. In 1996 mm -hmm. is when I was with Shell Petroleum at Nasik. That is when I got married. My life partner's name is Anuradha Sharma. She's a cost accountant and ICWA and uh, LLB. 
she works as a director with the ministry of shipping she's a my life partner and i'm also blessed with a son who's doing who is 21 years old he has done his btech computer science engineering from triple it gwalior and he is currently working at hyderabad at in a mm-hmm. software company Great. so that is uh, my family's background but uh, yeah. post that i also moved on to different companies at the national level wherein i worked for a company uh, called as pistlery uh, international which is in the mineral drinking water as general manager sales heading all india i also mm-hmm. worked for a company called as vidyut metallics they market a brand called as supermax shaving okay, yeah so supermax I was, I was looking after the international and india business head for them uh, pan india mm-hmm. and i also last my position was called as dgm sales so, uh, with reliance communications so i was looking after uh, the uh, rural india uh, telephone business now it is no more the company has got wound up anil ambani's business it was it has got wound up yeah but yeah. uh, that is when the recession hit in 2008 9 that's when uh, jobs there was a massive thing jobs were lost i too lost my yeah. job at a big package and then i thought mm-hmm. what to do and that's when i got this offer in africa to go through placement and then i moved on to africa mozambique there mm-hmm. i joined as a general manager with vista um which is a paper manufacturing company into the stationery business so i moved on from there and then that company was selling only a few containers of paper that time only photocopy papers their model was we import paper jisko chahiye anyone who wants has to come to me and buy that was their model of business so i told okay. them why not we buy just like a fast moving consumer goods we told what is that i told you put it into the truck we put it i sat along with the vehicle i told we'll go like retailing we used to do in fmcg and the whole day in the morning to evening we sold the whole truck so from wow. five containers a month we we moved the sales to 100 containers a month so that was the magic that i could do it in two years time and the company wanted to actually move into another business which they wanted to diversify so i was telling them that why don't you diversify your business rather than being only in the paper business why don't you diversify yourself so they told you identify a sector which is growing and we are ready to pump in the money so that is when i created a construction vertical for them that is into building material business and mm-hmm. i started off with basic products which are required in building materials so i used to go to china and different countries and procure those materials get them rebranded and sell and soon i met one of my supplier with whom i used to sell only uh, provision items there and then that guy told me that uh, hari you have been supplying me provisions along with provision then you started with paper and from paper you have moved on to now cement and other things why don't you join us and as an employee so i told i am not interested so i told no, you know so this, this was the <clears throat> this was the supplier from china okay. no 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 this was a not a supplier i used to supply to him at oh, some other big indian okay. indian company mm-hmm. called as lucky lady and mm-hmm. that's when uh, i joined him on a salary plus a percentage of business which was just 1% of the entire business value and from scratch i transformed this business from a provision shop which he closed down completely he had a chain of eight stores in the country which got completely closed down today he has got 22 construction and building material business just like danu bin uh, dubai as big as that and his business is uh, from uh, a zero dollar business to 150 billion dollar business i have created from scratch so each wow. store is around 20000 square feet having more than 60000 items of building material like that 22 stores in one country so that's what i could create for him and my commissions that i used to earn from him was close to 1 crore in a year so that was the kind of money i used to make so that uh, was something that i was doing i was successful i was able to do it and uh, that is when my wife told why don't you come back to india how long will you run for money why don't you come down sun is going to 10th standard ajao and that's when i told okay why not shift to india so when i came back to india i was also wanting to do something so i thought that i should do something on my own i cannot sit in the house nor i can work for someone under a salary or something and that's when i thought i was having enough money so i thought why not i start doing some business that's how i thought so i did not know 
with no clear focus on what to do. I had come from foreign, so I had just uh, thought of going and having a small vacation at Delhi with my brother. So that's when I went to Delhi and then my brother told me, Pradati Maidan, there is a franchisee exhibition. Why don't you go and see it if you want to do something? I told why not? So I went there. So that's when I went and stood there. I saw several stalls and my I got attracted to a cartridge refilling business. And that's when I came to know that uh, cartridges are not manufactured anywhere in the world. Out of 208 countries, only one country manufactures printer cartridges, laser printer cartridges. And that is China. China. 207 countries import from China. So that's when I stuck. And I thought that when everyone wants a cartridge and when it finishes, everyone wants a refill. So why not? Uh, this is a business which is going to be a recurring income. It's like the blade and a handle. So everyone would want it regularly. So why not we get into this uh, lucrative business? So I went and asked him, what is the franchisee fee? They told me 12 lakhs and you've got five years uh, franchisee rights and uh, you'll have to pay a royalty also. We said, agreed. I thought it's worth it taking it up and running this business. And I had no knowledge about how does a franchisee work what are the pricing? You cannot cut the price, undercut the price. That's when I came to know it's like McDonald's. You have to keep the price steady. You cannot keep changing the prices or fluctuating to get into some orders. And that's They control people, the price, right? Yeah, they control the price. They control the systems, processes, everything. And this is an American-based company called as Cartridge World Worldwide. So they have complete systems of American system of uh, refilling cartridge, which is very, very technical. And that is how they go about things. And uh, I started doing that business and over a year period, I was taken for a shock one fine morning where I got a letter from Cartridge World Worldwide that the whole company has been taken over by a Chinese giant in China. Okay. They have acquired the entire company Cartridge World US. So Cartridge World had 100 franchises in India and I was one among them. So everything got closed overnight. So our money was gone. That was my first debacle. I lost my money, 12 lakhs. I lost the brand. And all that I created in the last one and a half years went to drain. That means that the entire brand was closed. I could not no more sell the brand in the name of Cartridge World or manufacture the cartridge in that time. Yeah. So, so the, the Chinese company acquired the this company and shut it down. Yeah, because they didn't want competition to China. Hmm. It's like uh, Thumbs Up, uh, Limca and Gold Spot, if you remember, was acquired by yeah. Coca-Cola in India. And today Gold Spot is not seen. Yeah. yeah. Right? Same way they killed the brand. Yeah. So they killed this brand, Cartridge World, got killed. Later hmm. on, now after some seven years, they have again brought in Cartridge World in their name. Okay. So that has happened subsequent after seven years. But the time that I left them in 2016, that's when I thought that why not I do something new. I can't, I did not know what to do next. So I thought that why not I create my own brand. Mm -hmm. I have client base who wants cartridges and they want refills regularly. Why not create my own brand and why do I give royalty? I start my own. But then I did not have the systems, processes and standardization which I wanted. Because I found that I tried to find, find out what is that one pain area that people have in the market? And I came to know that people want instant uh, refills. Like today, if my printer gets over, the next minute I want another cartridge. And most of the people in the office do, do not tell them till the cartridge is over. It's like the gas cylinder used and kept empty, but they will not tell them that it is to be refilled. So people do not like downtime. So that is when I thought that why not I create that. So I did a good thing that time was to actually, uh, I went that Cartridge World had a lot of shakeup, means people, employees who were there then in Cartridge World Mumbai lost mm -hmm. their jobs. And that is yeah. when I paid a guy 10 lakh rupees. I told him, why don't you come down to Nasik, create systems and processes of cartridge refilling for me. So the Asia continent technical head who was from IIT, Kharagpur, he came down and created a complete manual for me and created systems and processes. We brought machines to refill cartridges. And that is how I created my own brand of cartridge called as Handyman Laser Printer Cartridge, which till today is working, which is functional. 
Okay. Okay. What is making it so unique was that we gave gas cylinder cartridges, like which means that when you call us on the board line that you have a cartridge to be refilling. So what we do is first we'll come and give you a cartridge bank. So suppose you are in an office. So we first map all the printers that you have and we give you standby cartridges. So you mm -hmm. have 10 cartridges in the bank which is not built. It is just my stuff at your warehouse. So whenever you need a cartridge, you will just go to the bank, take one cartridge, put your empty and you send us a message that I've used one out of it. And then your bill is raised. So that's the system we oh, started. So, so you were only charging them when they use it, but otherwise it was lying there. And how would you yes. know they, uh, they were being... Because we know their average consumption per month and we we had a weekly yeah. sales visit. So oh, when we okay. go there, we know what is the uh, cartridges remaining and balance. We have the stocks with us. So we know exactly that there could be a maximum if they don't report it also within seven days, it is there with us. And yeah. the margins were good. So we were working at close to around 200% margins. So we had the 200% margins. Wow. Okay. So that's how we could uh, make big money in the cartridge business. But the volumes were not picking up. I mean to say is that the business volumes that was there. So wherever we go and explain our business, we used to get the business. That is how it is. And then I thought that why should I, how should I grow my business? So that's when I came through networking forums. So when I went to networking forums, I started uh, speaking about my cartridge. So wherever I spoke, the owner was the directly there. He told that, okay, even I need a cartridge. Why don't you give me? And my prices were reasonable. We were just at 500 rupees. You get a cartridge replaced. And we gave them a 30 days money back guarantee. So people wanted something like this, which was not available in the market that time. And uh, that is when I learned that through networking platforms, there came a guest speaker who spoke. And I liked the way he spoke about business. So he had a course of business management. So I thought that I'll, why not learn how business, how to do business. Already I had done my MBA, MCOM. I thought I learned this. So I did a course there for one year, how to do business. Mm -hmm. And that is when I learned that my business should have systems, legal things, trademark should be registered, several things that I was missing in my, there were gaps. I could not read financials about my business. I started learning how to read the financials of my business. And that's when I learned I should have a system, process, and everything. So I started putting in tracking systems in my business, and I started monitoring it and growing my business. And that's when I came across that there is another training program at Delhi with uh, Dr. Vivek Bindra, who is one of the motivational speakers. And then I thought, why not go and attend that? So that's when I invested another 2 lakhs. I went there. I attended that program called as the Leadership Funnel. And that's where I met Dr. Bindra. And then after that, after the entire meeting, training, I had a session with him and I asked him that, uh, he told me that, Hari, your business is good, but this cartridge business cannot be scalable, repeatable, sustainable. Okay. And you cannot grow anywhere. Then I asked him why. So he said that how many people can you go and explain the features and benefits of your cartridge? That many people will buy your cartridge. Like how many people as you, you go and explain, can go and, uh -huh. we can go and personally explain. They will be the guys who yeah. will buy your product. So your yeah. bandwidth would be somewhere going, getting stuck and you are completely manual, manually manufacturing it through a machine. And then you have geographically distribution uh, where you need to go and give service. So it's a service based completely. So even if you want to do a franchisee based business, it might fail because tomorrow people may then start using duplicate products in the production. They may not tell you what they are doing in a remote city. You may not have systems and controls over it. So the franchisee model of this might not be scalable. Hmm. So that's when I then thought what I should be doing again. So that again brought to me my dilemma that, okay, this business is okay, but it is only geographically limited to Nasik. I cannot grow beyond that. Or if I have to yeah. grow, then I should have that kind of manpower, that kind of scalability and other things. So again, my head went upside down. What should I do? So that's when uh, I attended further courses. I went to IIM Ahmedabad. So I did a hmm. program on uh, how do you get closer to the Indian consumer buying pattern? How do consumers buy products? So that's when I learned that customers do not buy products. 
and they actually buy values in the product they exchange their money for, for a value which is greater than money that's what i learned there are then four values i learned that in the proposition there are four values which is called as money value so money value is something that like an onion at 50 paisa kg someone comes and starts mm -hmm. selling it he doesn't have to sell it it will be sold because of the price so price is the only criteria that, de that defines the sales so that is money value similarly i came to know that some of the products only sell because of performance value the performance is so good that money has no criteria of selling for example my cobosh siemens hitachi mm -hmm. daikin they sell because of high quality products price no one goes and bargain there then i learned that yeah. there are some of the products which sell on emotional values you can see prada gucci nothing to do with price they want yeah. the brand prada they go and buy it you may get a similar yeah. product even much below that and last and not the least which i learned was my learning curve was called as the relationship value people buy because of relationships and that is when i learned that we go to a barber every month to do our haircut do we change every month our barber no why because we have a relationship with that human being we go to the market we go to a specific shop and buy our products why because we know that fellow he respects us he may not give you a yeah. discount but still you buy from him you take the case of uh, pani puri which is an indian dish so when you eat pani puri you are paying some money you get some fixed pani puri but in the end he gives you a free one in the end of it so yeah. that free thing is something called as the relationship value so that's when i learned that you can create a areva moment in the customer's mind if you can add value in the relationships without spending a single penny you don't spend a single naya paisa more but you can create a difference in the relationships and take your business to the next level that man will recommend you for the business he will again and again call you for the business to share a small example is that you take a tailor you buy fabric and stitch it to a tailor from a tailor your uh, suppose a lady's uh, salwar kameez you stitch it from a tailor but when you go to the tailor he says that there are 10 dresses that you want to stitch and i have only 10 days time i can't give you before 5 days and it is diwali your wife will say okay give it i need only one within 5 days he gives me but she also knows that this man never gives it on time one or two days he makes it late so it's saturday yeah. night you are given all the clothes to him and you come back to your house after going to hotel eaten your food you come back and relax in your house imagine it is sunday morning 10 am and the doorbell of your house rings and when you open the door and you find that tailor has stitched all the 10 dresses of yours come home and delivered it the very next day what kind of feeling will you have you have yeah, created that's a lot of moment there yeah yeah customer delight right yeah, yeah. now that customer delight yeah. will give you will this lady now recommend this tailor to her other friends definitely now will that trust level has it gone up with that lady yeah. will she yeah. uh, take always uh, go again back to the same tailor repeat orders yes So yeah, what is sure. a small yeah. learning from this is that we always have to under promise over deliver. That's yeah. the learning that I learned from this, and that's when mm -hmm. I started implementing that in my business also. Always under promise and over deliver that to the client. So when customers get higher values, greater values than the money that value they have given, they will be with you. And I mm -hmm. put a lot of uh, stress on the relationships. when a client says that this cartridge is not working i will not go for debate i will just change it mm. Mm. i believe him because he is the owner of that business so you just believe him and do it so that's when i started doing that business in that way but that's when I, when i met dr bindra he said it is not scalable not repeatable so think of a product which you can make it scalable repeatable sustainable profitable and it should be a blue ocean which means that other than you no one should have such a business in india or world can you create something like that i said why not and that's when i started focusing again on what i should do different and that's when mm. i went to the canton fair exhibition in china and i saw a food manufacturing crispies they were making pops out of rice 
So I went and saw that I like the machine. I told that if you put uh, grains of rice, then you can see a pop coming out. I told, wow, it is very nice. Why not I make such a product like this? And I asked the Chinese person that you put any grain, it will convert. He said, yes, you put any multiple grain, it can convert it into a pop. Pops, yeah. So my first mistake there was that I did not notice or check multiple Indian grains on it. I just placed mm -hmm. five machines order, paid him the money. And I came back after visiting his shop, his factory, I mean. And mm. the first set of machines came back, came to me at Nasik. It was a totally new product. And I thought that I should have a food which is zero oil, zero sugar, zero cholesterol, zero fat, 100% baked, vegan. And yeah. it should be good in taste, unique. And that's when I came out with a brand called as Handyman Multigrain Pops. So that was the product that I developed that time. And it was made out of rice, wheat, jawar, bajra, nachini, we call it, and then flaxseed and till. So these were the products, mm -hmm. grains used to put, and then it used to pop a product. But when I started doing it initially, the first thing is that the machine got spoiled. That was my learning. The mm -hmm. machine completely got blown up. Because Indian grains don't work on Chinese machines. And each grain <laughs> has a different cutting. But also, Hari sir, when, when you in, imported these five machines, you went there, you bought these five machines, you got yeah. when you got those got the delivery, yeah. you needed a space, right? Did you set up a factory to put these machines and... Uh... Yeah, I had taken a rented space that time, mm -hmm. a rented okay. space, uh, and then there I started making it. But when my right. first machine got blown up, then I didn't know what to do. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this short break. You're listening to the Be Your Own Boss podcast. By the way, if you find this podcast useful, please share it with your friends and family so that someone somewhere having the potential and the dream to start a business can get some help and some inspiration from this. And if you'd like to support me so that I can bring in more content, Please subscribe to the show wherever you're listening to right now. And you can also send me your feedback on byob at sachinacharya.com. That's byob at sachinacharya.com. And now, back to the show. I took out the new second machine and put again the grains. Within five minutes, that machine got blown up. Third machine I put, third machine got blown up. That's when I thought there's something grossly wrong in the way I'm working. And that's when I put, I learned one more thing in life is that always ask for help. So yeah. I made a good post and I posted in my networking that I am stuck with such a such position. And I need someone who can work innovatively on in different machines which are not there in India. And that's when I got a friend of mine, Mr. Parak Kedkar from uh, IIT Powai. So when he came, he saw the machine. Then he told me to open up the whole machine and re-engineer it. So while opening up the whole machine, he came to know that Chinese people had used several cheap parts, several cheap gears, which was breaking down. So we changed the entire mm -hmm. thing. And then we also learned that the grains of India are different. So I got a mm -hmm. consultant from Dubai. I paid him 7 lakh rupees and I called him to Nasik Maharashtra. We gave him accommodation and he helped me to create a recipe which will pop correctly. So a food technologist was brought in. Right. And only one thing I learned from uh, various uh, training sessions is I created an NDA with him, which is that non-disclosure agreement and non-compete agreement. Yeah. And a six-year uh, non-disclosure. He cannot work with any other food industry with the same recipe. So mm -hmm. I created that, signed up the agreement, paid him the money. We created that product. And the product was wow. So the first thing was that in uh, 2019, November, December, I started my first franchisee at Big Bazaar, Nasik, and one mm -hmm. at uh, Metro Cash and Carry. So two franchisees I opened. The concept was that client has to come. In front of the client, you put the grains, rice, wheat, jawar, bajra, nachini, oats, flaxseed, till. And within a minute, seven pops will get popped. 
and then you can stack it into a pack of 10 and give it to them. The size was like a papad. So it was not a papad, not a crispy. So it was thin and light right. with uh, low calories. And uh, my pricing, and, I learned and, from the McDonald's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was I ready to eat, right? Just yeah, like a ready I mean, to eat, ready to eat machine. product. Wow. Wow. And it was mm -hmm. like the I learned from McDonald's the decoy pricing. So I priced one product of 10 for 70 rupees by two for 100. So my average ticket price per billing was 100 rupees per visitor who used to come. Yeah. Because when yeah. people see one pack for 70, two for 100. So people used to buy two. So that's how my first month and my basic success was on that same day when I inaugurated my store. I got two buyers who came and told that I will buy the franchise. The same day, mm -hmm. my both the franchises got sold. Same day, the day I inaugurated. So that was my first success there. Wow. That the first two franchises opened and got sold. So that was the best part of my life. So uh, the month of November, December, January and February, I was doing every outlet was doing two lakhs per month cash business. So both the businesses mm -hmm. were giving me four lakhs a month regular business. So that was my turnover monthly. And that's when I learned that why not I can scale this in Pan India because it's just a model which I have to repeat. So I created a system and process where grains also the whole recipe without that my machine will not work. That much I came to know. So I made the recipe into three parts. One was manufactured in Surat, one was at Rajkot and third one at Mumbai. And then when you mix the three only then the recipe becomes the one which you need. So anyone who has to take a franchisee, he's got a ready mix. He has to cut the packet, put that one kg pack, and then he starts making the pops. So that was the kind of a mm. recipe, ready-made thing. So I went in and I tied up with Franchisee India, which was a, a Delhi-based company, Franchisee India. And I participated at Pune and Chandigarh exhibitions. Mm. And I got 222 inquiries for franchisees. So many people were wow. interested in taking up my franchise, unique, because I had put the machine on display and people wanted to have my franchise. So when I got 222 inquiries, I thought that why not I buy some more machines because the first two machines got sold out. So I ordered for another four or five machines. I didn't have money. I pledged my house and I took a loan and I brought in more five machines. Mm -hmm. That's where I did this. But that's when uh, in the month of March... 2020 that's when covid hit the first wave of covid hit and that's when uh, unfortunately my first two outlets that i opened at big bazaar nasik road and big bazaar uh, metro, metro cash metro. and carry both got closed yeah. down because the first thing indian government did was they closed the malls for the covid yeah and that is when my day one business closed from 4 lakhs to zero that is how it became and then mm -hmm. I thought that uh, I should wait some more months because the I thought the market would open up. So I didn't sack my employees. I kept paying rentals to Big Bazaar, Metro Cash and Carry. I paid money to my staff to be there remaining with me, technical staff and the uh, people who run the machines. I also invested during the vacation uh, of COVID. I put them into various skill training classes, online classes on education so that how to speak to a client. So different courses I made them do. So I thought I'll increase their skills, which will help me. But then there is one thing I learned after four months, because my shelf life was only three months of my food products. So I had yeah. bought in more than 10 tons of grains for processing. So all those grains had to be thrown in the dustbin because it had expired by that time, three months time. Mm. Okay. And I could not do because it was against, um, I mean, it was not a planned thing. I had also taken loan and I did a construction of a unit in my own bungalow where I live. I created that into a floor area and I made a big uh, construction there itself. So I did around 10 lakh rupees I spent on shed and all that. So all this I had taken a loan and that loan which I had taken initially was around 38 lakh rupees. So that's something that I had taken. And I had a mm -hmm. EMI of around 50, 55,000 EMI. And I had to also pay for all the staff and everything. So every month, my payout was close to around 1 lakh rupees and income was zero. So I was continuously paying that money. So over seven, eight months, mm -hmm. then I thought that uh, 
I am getting stuck like this. And that's when I met someone and then uh, I went to a mentor of mine, Mr. Vikesh Walia, who is the vice president of Times of India RMD circulation. And then he told me that why, what's the main constraint is that because the mall is not opening, you cannot sell. So why don't you make it into a tin packing, a finished product, so it can be sold anywhere. So I thought, okay, mm -hmm. I can sell it. If it cannot be sold like this, I can sell it. So that's when I thought that why not I go and sell it as it is, like a finished product. So I took that and I also came to uh, Dubai. I met Mr. Dhananjay Datar in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And I showed him the product. Yeah. And then he told me that, see, there are several constraints in Dubai, how you have to sell it, food uh, licenses. It has to be completely sealed. It cannot be opened. So several things. So he told this is how the packaging should look. So after taking his guidance, I went back again to India and I started improving on the packaging thing. So I invested a lot of money on dyes. And that's when I came to know that my initial license of selling the product was only based at Nasik. So I had to take a food license pan India. Barcoding was required if it was in a tin packing for uh, Amazon or anywhere to sell it. So I had to do barcodings. And all that I did it. And then I tried to increase the shelf life because three months is not enough to sell anything anywhere. So then I increased the shelf life to six months. So that are, these are the improvements I brought. I brought in new flavors in rice and wheat. And then I had created the entire product into an ultra new product, completely new product. You can see those products on my website called as handyman.net.in. The entire product is there even now. And that's when I decided why not sell it through a distributor network. Because I was good in fast moving consumer goods, why not sell it through distributors? And that's when I went and met various distributors at Chennai, Baroda, Hyderabad, and various places, Surat. And that's when uh, I got orders also. So I got 2 lakhs orders uh, at once. And then I got around 30 lakhs uh, orders that you can supply from April. That was the year 2020. I believe 21, I think. Yeah, yeah 21. Yeah. And then I could uh, sell it to them. So that is by February, I got these orders. They told from April, you can start your supplies. So again, I bought in another 10 tons of grains and started manufacturing it in February. And I scaled up my operations. I created a lot of inventory. And uh, my bad luck, the second wave of COVID hit in March 21. Yeah. Uh, and that's when my entire business got again closed down. The first time when people did, people did not know who did. In the second time, there was oxygen shortage and we very close relatives got were no more. And that's why uh, the business, no one wanted to keep a new product and start some business. And that's when in mm -hmm. seven, eight months, I came to know that I'm stuck with the cash flow where I was stuck with the raw materials which I had to throw back again in the dustbin. All the packaging that I invested was another waste. The factory yeah. shed that I manufactured was a cost, although an asset, but it was there. New machines imported was an additional expense that I had done. All the outlets that I had created, again, I, I could not run it for two years. So all those things put together. And uh, then I had taken up a top-up loan also of another 8 lakhs too, because I was tied up with constraints. And that took up my loan to around 48 lakhs. At 48 mm -hmm. lakhs, my EMI was around 75,000 rupees a month, which was very, very difficult to pay at that time. And plus salaries that I had to pay. And that's when I decided that, Baba, I have to sell the house. No. I had kept a collateral of one crore with the bank. So I thought I have to sell this and repay the uh, 45 lakhs or 48 lakhs loan and then get out of it. Otherwise, there was no other way. So till then, I had not even told my wife that I had taken a loan collateral for uh, the business. But then I had to tell her because I, it was a final decision that I'm going to sell the property. So I had to finally break the ice. So mm -hmm. I took courage and then I talked to my wife and I told her that uh, there's something gone wrong in my business. And without telling you, I had done this and now I'm stuck here. There's a kind of money. So she asked me two things. If the amount is small, you tell me I'll pay you 10 lakhs or 15 lakhs. If it is, I can pay you. And you can start it. So if you are there, I don't know, it's something bigger than that. I can't even tell you the amount. Then she told you, tell me at least. If I can help, I'll help you. Otherwise, you leave it. Otherwise, you sell the house. I am not stopping you. Then I told her it is 48 lakhs. Then she told this much even I cannot give you. Then she mm -hmm. told me a few tips. She told me that, why don't you do this? Now, already this is over. And the COVID is a factor that has brought you to where you are. 
why don't you do two things? She asked me, what is the rate of interest that you have taken overdraft? I told it is at 16% rate of interest. She told it is very, very high. Why don't you, why didn't you take it at a lower interest? I told I didn't have collaterals and uh, collateral was only my bungalow. My income was nothing. So because income was yeah. nothing, so the rate of interest went high. So he told, why don't you use my salary slip and you take a loan? So that may come down, bring down your rate of interest. I told, okay, send your slip. So, but the next day morning, to my surprise, she sent me around 15 lakhs. She broke all her FDs and sent me 15 lakhs. She told, go and pay the bank. So that was the first thing that uh, was surprised me that I could pay the bank and close down 15 lakhs. The top up loan came down, my EMI came down to 52,000. And I went and paid that money fully to the bank. And then she, I also negotiated with the bank for the rate of interest. And my rate of interest, after I negotiated well, I could bring it down to 8%. Okay. Wow. So that was the first thing that came in. The second thing my wife had told me is that first of all, you close down the existing business, completely food business, because another six, seven months, the COVID thing will not work. So you close down the entire business, don't bleed anymore. If you can't earn anything, let us not bleed further. So I closed mm -hmm. down the entire operations. I had an office there. She told you give the office on a rental business, which will give you some passive income. So I gave that office on rent where I started getting 20,000 rupees a month. I had a cartridge business. So she told you give that to your staff so that they pay you a fixed income per month. So I told, okay, I gave the entire business to my staff. I told that, see, I can't pay you every month's salary. But you give me a fixed income. The business is yours. Billing will happen even now in my company name. But you have to give me 50,000, 15,000 rupees every month. Fixed. So they told, okay, mm -hmm. we will run the business. We'll pay you every month 15,000. And we will run the whatever profits we make, we make. I told, okay. So that's how I started getting 35,000 rupees fixed income from zero. When I was not making any money. And I had no commitment for paying anything to them. And then my wife right. told me, now you're free. Why don't you come to Bombay and start doing consulting, which you're very good at. I told, yeah. So I'm a, I've learned many things in sales and business through various training programs and everything. Why not I come to business and do this? And that's when I got an uh, first consulting with uh, Ashok Leyland at uh, Uganda, Africa. So they paid me for that assignment, 8 lakh rupees, 45 days assignment at Uganda. So I went there, they paid for the ticket and stay, food, everything. I set up their entire distribution for trucks, truck business there. And sales part, channel partners and created their entire strategy business and everything and gave it there for them. I got 8 lakh rupees for it. So that was for the mm -hmm. distributor, not directly with the company, but the distributor would take on the business had given me this offer. So that's what I did. And when I came back from Uganda, I got another consulting immediately. And that okay. gave me 3 lakhs a month consulting fees. So with this money, I could easily repay my loans. There's one more mm -hmm. thing that I forgot to say in between is that I thought that how can I bring down the loan even fast? And that's when I made an SMS to all my 10 close relatives that I'm in distress. I'm stuck in the business and I need your help. I need just 5 lakh rupees for 10 years. I cannot pay you any interest. Mm -hmm. And after 10 years, I'll re repay your 5 lakhs. Can you help me? Like that, I sent this SMS to 10 people, close relatives, friends, cousins. And believe me, four of them paid me. So I got 20 lakhs from my friends at 0% interest for 10 years. So my wow. cousin from Dubai sent me 5 lakhs immediately. My brother paid me. So like that, I got 20 lakhs cash. And that I went and paid the bank. So my loan came down further down. And this every month that 3 lakhs I used to get, I used to pay every monthly, I used to keep paying the bank. So within some 7-8 months, my whole loan got over. My uh, pro property papers hypothecated came out completely. My consultancy business got picked up completely. And I was doing very good. So there are two benefits. One is that my consulting was giving me 3-3.5 three, three lakhs consulting business. And my uh, passive income of 35,000 rupees was coming from the rental business. So that was yeah. making close to around 3.35 lakhs a month, which was pretty good for me for that time. And that's when I thought, how can I grow this further? And that's when I met. I thought that it is today's the era of not competition, but collaborations. 
and that is when i started tying up with hr agencies because i find that lot of hr agencies you know they do recruitments they go and work with companies and that's when i i they one of the hr agencies found out that the company is struggling with sales in their business their business is not doing good like mine and that's when they called me and they told hari can you see and help them they need uh, this company is having uh, you know they don't have uh, systems and processes in sales so that's when i went and met the owner and then i came to know he's having a 50 crore business and uh, he does not even have a blueprint sales blueprint what's a blueprint is like when i make a building i first do a drawing and then i create a tower on it then i buy steel cement after knowing what is the requirement how many of us know that we need to create a blueprint even in sales before we bring in the manpower people reporting structure sales process how do they daily report what is the monthly report weekly report how do you make him accountable so many places you know you don't know what is the output in a b2b sales it takes time to get the business in a business to business so generally yeah. we don't measure their output we measure their inputs which we can make them accountable for so how many leads you got how many follow ups you have made how many meetings you have done what kind of data you have what is your sales funnel and then we taught them the process of reverse sales funnels what is a reverse sales funnel we go and meet many people we talk about our product but then that guy is not interested in buying your product after one hour we came to know that he does not want to buy the product and mm-hmm. then i learned that why not to ask him two more questions now that i have invested one hour with you sir can you give me two references after hearing my product knowledge my business can you refer me to two more people whom you feel would be useful for this kind of a business that i have explained you last one hour and that fellow is very happy because you're not selling to him so he'll give you two or three names of his friends so from that 10 calls i used to get 30 new leads and that's how we grew that business yeah and uh, mm-hmm. we also learned that there's a lot of money was stuck he was also stuck into a cash flow of he used to do a uh, monthly turn of 2 crores and his cash flow was around 8 crores stuck in the market so four months credit so we mm-hmm. first uh, brought him to we told that whatever past you have done i cannot do a correction so we stopped the entire 8 uh, crores we brought in a plug there we told that we went to each and every party got confirmation that this much money you owe me give us a pdc check means pre dated uh, check for the rest of the yeah. money when you are going to pay us and then any fresh stock you need you will get standard 30 days credit so what we did is we priced the product increase the price of the product we built it to them and we told that if we receive your payment by on the 30th day you get this much credit back mm. so if they don't pay then the banking cost is completely covered okay yeah, yeah. so that is how we improved his cash flow we, then we saw that lot of products are not even being sold out of 10 products only one product is selling so nine products cross selling is not happening so the range is not being so so several such challenges we found and that's when after mm-hmm. we gave him the entire blueprint he said hurry why not now you help us in implementation of this because we ourselves might not be able to scale up and that's when we ta- we have taken up that we do something called as build businesses operate their businesses and then transfer the mm-hmm. entire business back to you so once it is running sustainable profitable scalable then give it back to you so then he mm-hmm. feels that it is on auto mode and that's the success yeah. in consulting so i have collaborated with various hr agencies i'm also a part of roof, rooftop sales in dubai with alifia sura and uh, yeah. we do consulting at various organizations so that has given me a uh, strength for uh, helping businesses grow i have, i understand businesses pain point basically and i help them in implementation because i have undergone as an entrepreneur the pain and i know exactly yeah. what is the pain happening in their minds and that's where i help them mm-hmm. to so that's where i do so today i do consulting and i also do my passive income of business which is giving so that's mm-hmm. about wow okay. so uh, at at all each each and every stage of your journey looks like you kept going back to investing in yourself right you you did a lot of these at at several points i noticed that when you mentioned you went to delhi you did it you took a course you took up this correct <clears throat> and 
when you did this transition, right after uh, you know you invested in yourself, yes, and then when uh, you know you made when you came back from Mozambique and uh, you started this business. Uh, for the capital of your business, was that like was that the savings from your uh, yeah uh, yeah yeah all the my time own saving from yeah. your own money okay yeah yeah okay, okay. Yeah. I lost and my later entire when money you that time yeah 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 close to around yeah, one I mean, crore man, lost from one crore lost to uh, back to oh profit my God. that was my bounce yeah. back that was a powerful bounce back right and yeah. and that um, that period of uh, when you know, when you were in debt of uh, what forty-eight lakhs and yeah. uh, not able to pay the EMI, the, the way you turned around yeah. that, and if the, the, your your family supported you, all your uh, in, even your yeah. See, I support. never thought about who so, will give me or not help me. There is one thing that I learned in yeah. business, was just ask, believe, and yeah. receive. So first, believe in yourself, and the world will believe in you. So if you don't yeah. ask for help, people will not come and help you. So you ask, it's like you have a stone in your hand. There is mango on the tree. You can throw the stone. Whether mango will fall, you don't know. What I lose is only a stone. But if I get, I get a mango. So I sent those yeah. 10 SMS that day and that helped me. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 very important that you do go ahead, uh, go ahead and, you know, take your, uh, do, do your efforts. And... Um, so, Hari sir, when you look look at your uh, life now as an entrepreneur, as a as a freelancer now in in the consulting business, versus the earlier life when you were working as an employee, right? Yeah. Um, you worked in several big brands. Correct. Now, what's what's the difference? Like, what is it that you love the most about being an entrepreneur as as a self, uh, being your own boss? There are two things. One is that when you're an employee, you don't have, you do not know the entire product cycle, right from buying, branding, packaging to the entire sales. You're just a part of a process. You're not the entire company there. When you're yeah. an entrepreneur or solopreneur, you are the only one man show, which means you open the shop to close the shop. You are responsible for running your own business profitably. Yeah. Many entrepreneurs or solopreneurs like I started, we all make some mistakes in life and the first mistake is we all jump into business without learning how to do business without gaining knowledge we all jump into it that is the first mistake yeah. we do so we half the people do not have a sales blueprint which i find many of the people even today do not know what they should be doing exactly so you don't have a blueprint and before that you have called in for cement steel you started digging the ground and you want to make a skyscape scraper without knowing how deep foundation you need. And that's the yeah. mistake I did also. Half the people do not have financial literacy. They may have some knowledge in their business. Suppose you are a photographer. You may know only photography well. But the other departments are not known to you well. You do not know much about trademarks, copyrights, NDAs. How do you track people? And many small people think that I'm so small solopreneur. I can't afford an ERP or a system. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling, I learned through my knowledge that even a single solopreneur can have a lead management software called as a CRM. And do you know that you have to just pay Indian 800 rupees per month to have a system in place? How many people know this? Pay 800 rupees and you have a CRM in place, ERP, which works on laptops, Windows, mobile, Java, all platforms, mobile and laptops and iPads, it works. And anywhere, real time. So when you get mm -hmm. lead management software, when you get systems and processes, it becomes very, very efficient. You know what's happening. And half the people don't plan their day, which means that they plan for something else. They plan that, okay, I should get this much business. But in the end of the day, suppose for an example, I plan for 100 rupees business. 100 rupees is the output that I want in the end of the day. There is no guarantee I will get it. Yeah. What is guaranteed is the input. So what are the top five inputs mm -hmm. I'm going to put for the day? So that is what I need to write. And I also need to write, because every input if I'm going to put, I'm going to get some expected output. 
So what is the expected output? Something will come out, but that may happen, may not happen. It is possible. Mm-hmm. It may happen, not happen. And whenever some things we promise and it does not happen, then we have some excuse with us why it did not happen. So I started finding out what are the top five excuses you have when you don't perform. So you write down that okay. clearly the reasons for your failure for that day. And then if you are failing, so you have a solution. So there should be a solution for your failure. For every problem, there should be a solution. So when you implement any solution, it should be lowest cost, flexible. Without you, you should be able to implement. It should have a system and a process and it should not repeat. That problem should not repeat. So that's something that you need to build. And how many of you like to see a cricket match without a scoreboard? But in our business, do we see that every day that scoreboard is going up? Ball by ball, are we able to monitor that this much money is coming to me? In the end of the day. So do we write in the end of the day what went well today in my work? One, two, three, four, five. What went wrong in my working today? One, two, three, four, five. And what could be improved in my life today? What are the improvement areas in my working? That's something that I need, I started working on. And from there I learned that any improvement, we cannot do it in the past. It can happen only in the future. So in future, yeah. if you want to implement something, you have to learn something called as the TV RAM. Where T stands for training, attended training online or offline in the area of your problem or challenge you're facing in the day. V stands for watch a video, which will help you to grow in the area of your challenge of faced by your day. Ram ka R, R stands for reading, read a book or a topic in the area of your challenge. Ram ka A, A stands for audio podcast. When we go for a walk, please listen to audio podcast or when you drive, put it in the car music system and hear uh, audio podcast in the area of challenge you're facing. And M is have a mentor in life who will ask you why you have not done the target for the day. There should be someone, an accountability partner who is going to pull you and ask you and you have a reporting system daily. Like in an office, when we go, you report to someone, right? What you have done, good or yeah. In your yeah. business, whom are you reporting to do daily? In your own business. So many businessmen do not have a reporting structure. So it is taken for granted that they don't do their left off. Whereas in an office, if you don't do, you're kicked out. You don't even remain in the job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So you start keeping even your wife. You can report your wife also. No harm in it. But have a reporting pattern. Daily you tell that I will do this. End of the day, tell I have not done this. And then she'll ask you why you have not done. Yeah. And then when you start getting accountable for it, and that's when you'll think that what's going wrong in my business. So there is, since there is no accountability, tracking systems, processes, I found that there are many people who go and like me and do courses. But then I found that many people have done courses, but they can't implement it. And that's where transformation happens. Learning to implementation that brings in transformation. So that's where I came up with this unique consulting business where we help people to build the business using systems and processes. We help them to operate, that is the implementation part. We help them to, on the field, implement it and then create transformation and then build, operate and then transfer the business. Bring in capabilities in your team and you run the business. So I am out of it. And there are very few people doing that kind of a business. So I actually take your own shirt measurement and a stitcher dress, which is exactly fitting. you. I don't have a universal Mm -hmm. problem for everyone. So I take your pain points. I take your problems, your challenges and work on that and I create a shirt which is exactly fitting you. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, Hari sir, now when you look at your journey, right? um, Right from the the, the transitions, the challenges that you faced, all of this, who or what would you like to give the credit for your success to? One is that I would give credit to my wife who actually, if that day I had not spoken, I wouldn't have some kind of wisdom. We always think that you should not ask someone not related to business. But the moment I was wrong there, I feel that it was the right thing. I spoke to my wife. She guided me on those areas of finance because she was a cost accountant. She had more knowledge on finance, how to make my working capital better, where I was not great. So that's something that you can always learn from people. So you should have a buddy structure. That's something that I learned. I gave my wife 
the credit. I also give credit to one Mr. Vikesh Walia, my mentor, my coach in my life, who is the vice president of Times of India, who helped me uh, have a bigger vision than what I was thinking. And that's mm -hmm. what, have someone in your life whom you can feel grateful to for being where you are. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and those people who come and help and I mean thanks to them yeah. that you know we yeah. we overcome hurdles at yeah. different correct. at different correct. parts different, of different uh, uh, phases of life, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So uh Hari sir, one final question as we uh, wrap up here. Um a lot of our uh, listeners are uh, either aspiring entrepreneurs or new entrepreneurs who are just starting correct. up their business, right? And uh, I'm sure they would benefit from the services that you offer uh, because this is exactly what you do. You help businesses, uh, you know, Correct. stabilize. And uh, so how do people reach out to you or, how, you know, how can people um, get in touch with uh, Bhavani Shankar Impacts? What's the best so, way? But, uh, they can uh, connect with me on my WhatsApp. So my WhatsApp uh, number, I'll put it on to you, which you can also put it below your story or somewhere where you can put yeah, that in, is, the, in the show uh, notes. So yeah. I'll put my mobile number. So it is 9819-600953, India plus 91. So you can add that. So that's my WhatsApp. Through my WhatsApp, you can reach me or you can reach me through my email at hari at the rate bhavanishankarimpex.com. That's how you can reach with me. The initial session that we will do will be absolutely free for any businessman in the, your community. Anyone who wants, who has a challenge or a pain in his business, can connect with me. I won't charge a single rupee. The first session will be absolutely free. They can come and share their difficulty with me. I promise them that they will have a transformation after one hour of discussion with me. That's my commitment to you. Wow. Wow. That I, I'm fantastic that you, you know, uh, the, the commitment and the, uh, I love that you're offering this, the, the first consultancy for free to help businesses. And then of course, you know, we take it from there. Yeah. Uh, Hari sir, thank you so much for uh, taking our time and coming on the show and sharing your journey with us. And uh, there are so many nuggets of uh, you know wisdom in this. So I'm sure uh, you know uh, the listeners will uh, benefit a lot from this. I have learned a lot in this one hour. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank Hari you, sir. thank you, Sachin, and thank you for uh, your uh, you are an inspiration for others. I would say because you are doing dual roles today. One, that you're pursuing your employment and second, you're pursuing your passion, which is this. Okay. Yeah. So today your passion one day will overtake your employment. So what you need to do is also monetize this and create a system by which this will start paying you revenue model. And that should become a full-time thing later on. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was Hari Sharma, the founder of Bhavani Shankar Impacts. And you've been listening to Be Your Own Boss.